Um, I did want to, because Toothless already brought it up, uh, discuss one of the issues we're having today. It actually uh, first was noticed last night um, after the uh, the Tuesday or yeah the Tuesday rolls, um, which is uh, a lot of people are not seeing um, the ripples on the water. Water's looking flat or glassy. Um, we've also been seeing some issues with highlight transparent, where um, they're looking opaque rather than transparent when you highlight them. Um, they're both related issues. We're both working on it. Um, our devs have a fix that they're looking at. They're discussing what their next path forward is. Um, so that is ongoing. So hopefully that'll be solved pretty soon. Um, my fingers are crossed at least. Um, we've located a couple of possible fixes. So that's what I got on that right now. We do also have an open blog post on that. Um, let me find it for you. Got it right there, Wendy. Look, there goes Izzy beating me to the punch. Um, but yeah, you can also track that. That'll tell you, like, as soon as we have additional information on it, uh, and as soon as they're resolved, it'll go up on there. Oh, nice. Yeah, so hopefully they'll take care of it pretty soon, Toothless. Nobody wants a, wants flat water. People prefer sparkling. Oh, I don't know. I could do with some um, nice lake ice normals. The wave speed to zero, probably solid mega prim over the surface. Yeah, we'll just settle the water around to uh, to zero height. That'll work. Well, I think we take flat water as opposed to no water. <laughs> We'll take the type of water we're seeing here right now. Yeah, but then when someone linden rolls your region, it turns into an even bigger hole in the void. Indeed, Shafi, I like that. <laughs> So moving on to uh, name changes, and just to give you guys an overall view and an update, uh, right now, premium accounts can get a name change for $39.99, while premium plus um, can get their name changed for $15. So quite benefit for moving up to the plus. The latter can now also be done through your account dashboard, so no more submitting tickets. Uh, you go on the dashboard uh, for premium plus and uh, go ahead and Complete your name change for the fifteen dollars. Uh, thank you for everyone who submitted tickets to get that done while we uh, corrected um, that update. Um, but it should be good to go. Any issues there? Definitely let support know. Also, uh, we have launched a name change option for basic members. So if you're not premium, you're not premium plus, you can still get a name change. Although the fee is fifty dollars, this can also be done uh, through your dashboard. And you can learn more about this update right here. Ah, oh, thank you, Izzy, for the breakdown, too. So, exciting news. Everyone can get a name change now. But you can see the uh, benefits uh, becoming premium and premium plus. Definitely, Karen. Um, yeah, the name change is there for basic uh, members. Um, but the thing is, we're constantly rolling out new names. So you might not be on, uh, you know, have your name for very long when you see a new name come through. So um, 
while $50 is good for that name, and if you're happy with that, you can keep it as long as you'd like to. Um, it can be quite expensive if you start changing it around. <laughs> How come the premium bear keeps spewing out basic hints that, of stuff we all know? People are clicking on touched. it. Based what people do and don't know. Any questions on the name change? Basic uh, premium or premium plus? I know it's pretty self-explanatory, and um, we're happy that everything is on the dashboard. It's going to make it much more streamlined and easy to complete. I'd also add that um, if there's a last name that you're interested in that isn't on the list, um, hasn't been used before, um, perhaps even Adam's underpants suggestion, um, there's a suggestion form right there that you can uh, add it to. Uh, no idea when it might come out, when you might get a specific name coming up from it or anything like that, but that's where we pull from. Um, so it's a good place to pull one in if you want one. I've seen a couple of folks who have gotten, who suggested names that popped up on the list and they're quite happy to finally have some specific name they wanted. Go for, Go Amelia. for it, Amelia. Jinx. <laughs> I'll answer that. Um, there is an option. We reserve your original name in the system um, should you decide to go back to your original name. Uh, no one's going to be able to take the name that you previously had. However, there will be a uh, separate fee for that. So for every uh, name service, um, there is a fee. Uh, it's equivalent to the fee that you paid to, for the, the first change. I'd also add on that that if you really like the last name that you have now or you have an idea of a, a first name that you want to use or want to keep the last name that's also an option so you don't if you're already say a Hart song or a Savinska or a Fredericks and you really like that last name but you want a new first that can also be done through the system Patrick, to answer your question, um, there isn't like a list that you can see other names that have been taken. However, um, if you're curious about if a name can be accepted, uh, I know of two ways to do it. One is the actual name change page because it's going gonna, it's gonna to run its own checker to see if that name that you want is eligible uh, to be used. Uh, the second one is you know when creating an account, you can uh, type in the name and it will tell you if that name has been taken or it's no longer available. But the, the easier of two options, obviously, would be the name change page. Um, even if you're not ready to purchase, you can still go on there, uh, type in the name, and the system will come back to say if it's available uh, without completing the purchase. You can still click back out.
quick update on uh, Linden Homes, especially for the Premium Plus accounts. Uh, we've gotten a lot of people asking about uh, Premium Plus being able to request a specific Linden Home. Um, that has been clarified a little bit in our FAQs in that it has to be a released Linden Home. We've had a bunch of people that have requested ones in non-released regions wanting to pre-select them. Just to reiterate that that's not something that we can do at this time. That's part of the process for releasing a Linden Home. The whole region has to be uh, set to be released, which means everything gets set over to the governor's ownership. So that would have to be all done manually if it wasn't um, done through the automated system if anybody had it uh, in particular so that's one of the reasons why we can't allow you to reserve something in a non-released region so just to kind of keep everybody on the same footing we only allow uh, premium plus people to go ahead and request a specific linden home on a released linden home region how is that for a tongue twister that's good to know Izzy. thank you a question that some of my friends have had coming up, there's a limit to how many times you can request a, um, a Pacific home in a month. If they don't get the request, does that limit still apply? So if they request one, it's denied. They request a second, it's denied. Are they out of turns for that month anyhow, or is it only accepted once? It's the number of requests, but we will sometimes uh, try to uh, help out. But the more people, unfortunately, the way life is, the more people abuse the situation, the tighter we have to be on the controls. So if somebody were to make requests and get denied, and it's honestly they're just trying to get a particular wind and home, we try not to be uh, penalizing uh, in that respect. But there are some people that go and try a Linden home out for two days and then select a new one, two days and select a new one, et cetera. That's uh -huh. the main intention for it. But like I said, it really depends upon how often it's uh, coming up as to how tight we have to be on that particular restriction. Okay, thanks. That, uh, I personally haven't ever felt the need to request one. At the moment, I've got more homes than I can handle, and I love them all, don't want to give any up, but can't afford them all, so I'm not interested in getting a new one. But I have a lot of friends who are real worried about that, so I wanted to know what to tell them. Absolutely. Adam, sure. Um, you just have to purchase it from that dashboard of the Elt account. Oh, I see. Like uh, by a proxy. Uh, from what I understand on that one, you can gift uh, to somebody else, but both accounts have to submit a uh, support ticket, right. one doing it, one uh, accepting it. Uh, but then you also have to have on the one that's receiving it, they specifically have to state that they understand that they'll still be responsible for the renewals, not the gifter. Yeah, it might honestly be more work doing that. Um, if you want to if an account, if it's your alt, it might just be a lot easier to log into your alt account to complete the purchase. Absolutely. For alt, definitely. That's not the case if you want to pay with existing Lindens, because your alt, if they don't already have a lot of payment history, they're not allowed to sell Lindens to get right. cash. I'm going to put a quick note in here just because uh, we've discussed these before. Um, and it is getting close to autumn. Halloween's also coming up. For uh, We'll be hosting, of course, a Halloween shop and hop this year. Uh, it'll run from October 6th to November 1st. Uh, applications for the vendors closed just yesterday, so I suspect we'll have more news on that pretty soon. But I know a lot of people really enjoy the shop and hop, so I thought I'd make sure to note that. 
And Adam, you're always decorated for Christmas. My Home Depot is already decorated for Christmas. They just skipped Halloween this year. No 12, 12 foot skeletons there? They have one small aisle. The rest are Santa's. <laughs> for shame. Sure, Teresa. I would just like to invite everyone to Firestorm's 12th anniversary party. It's a week from Saturday, September 3rd, from 4 to 6 p.m., and we have some uh, really hot entertainment. Uh, thank you, Izzy. And we also, um, if everybody who says they're giving a gift gives a gift, we're going to have 12 gifts to give out this year, although it's always possible some of the people who signed up for it won't actually come through. So it's going to be a real nice one. It's going to be our biggest yet. And I hope you can all come. Any other questions on what we've touched on so far? Feels like we're moving pretty fast. Go for it, Mertis. We'll see if we can answer it here. All right. Hey, can you hear me? We can Hello. Hear you. Yes, ah, perfect. Can. Um, excuse my English. Um, it's not my my first language. So, if you don't understand something, please do tell me. Um. So you see. There has been this issue presented to me uh, by clients and also by friends. Like uh, recently, a friend of mine, he he really likes a specific type of uh, gothic clothing. And there's this one store that he, it was his favorite store. He purchased a lot of products from it. Um, he also always left a good review on them if the product actually was what they were selling. But one day, he purchased one product that was not to the quality standard of the store. The texturing was off and the modeling too. And he expressed that on his review. He left like a three-star review and the description, he explained why. The, the creator, the owner of the store, he said nothing. The next day, when my friend tried to purchase from the store, he got a error over and over from the same store. The error said something like, this item is not available for purchase, I believe. Um, and I investigated for him, and it turns out he was blocked from the store. And that hit me strange, because I had no idea that when a, a creator, a store owner, blocks a client, that client is not only getting blocked from their personal store, it's also getting from the personal account, it's also getting blocked from their store. So the client becomes unable to purchase anything from the store, right? Um, now, what, what really troubles me is the implication of this system. Because we as content creators, store owners, we have to do the client support, and we have to deal with a lot of different people. 
and it, it takes this takes a lot of dedication and time. But sadly, not all of the content creators or store owners do this. I know a lot of creators that they straight up block people from make uh, because they make some basic questions. They block people even for the way they 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 present themselves or what they believe or the, or whatever really super uh, uh, personal reasons. They block people for personal reasons. And uh, when they do so, the clients are also getting blocked from their stores. Right, the thing is, some of these store owners, some of these creators, they, they sell really specific content for really specific people, small groups or even bigger groups. Uh, imagine being a member of a group, let's, see, let's say a role play group, and all the members inside that group, they buy from the same store. And for whatever, whatever reason, a personal reason, this user is getting blocked from the store. Now he's unable to access that content of which everybody on his group is enjoying and uses. He's dependent of that content. He's no longer able to access it because it was blocked. I do know, I do know the reason why a system like this was placed. There are, there are a lot of really problematic clients that they give really unfair reviews that they they just we just don't we just need to block them somehow and I imagine that system was placed for that people so creators have a way to deal with problematic clients but this system they waste place and the fact that nobody's getting informed like the client gets no not notification why he is unable to buy from the store. There's nothing for him. Also, the store owner, a lot of creators that have uh, explained this, they didn't even knew that when they block a person, they're also blocking them from the store. They had no idea. The clients don't know, the creators don't know. And also, the implication of the system, like some of the users that I have explained this, they now feel uncomfortable because they now know that there is a possibility that they're going to get blocked from a store just for being critical. You see, because not all of the, uh, all of the content creators are critical people. Some of them are really emotional and, and take things really personal. Uh, and I think the system only motivates content creators that suppress criticism. This is not good. This is also creating an uncomfortable situation for the clients. So that's the issue I wanted to present. Well, thank you for relaying the issue. I do appreciate it and uh, the time you took in uh, explaining it. Um, as uh, uh, our rep from governance has already stated, yeah, unfortunately, Merchants are allowed to, you know, block whomever. Um, yeah, hopefully, uh, resolution can be found between, you know, the um, uh, resident and the uh, the mer and the creator. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, things can get better between the two. Um, but yeah, and fortunately, we couldn't uh, be involved in the um, the way that they uh, manage their business. The thing is, not all, not all creators are responsible people. That's unfortunate, Definitely. I know. Right, and it's just like in the real world with store owners. I mean, you may have somebody who complains in a store or a restaurant or whatever, and the store owner refuses to service them anymore. Eventually, mm. 
that kind of business will probably end up hurting, especially in the real, real life, hurting the store person because the person isn't going to make any purchases anymore. So, But we can't interfere with that store owner's right to refuse service. Otherwise, we're forcing them to service uh, somebody. So while it's definitely not a perfect system and there's definitely uh, edge cases that uh, can be concerning, we have to protect a store owner's ability to um, go ahead and refuse service if they choose to. Since you're using real life as an example, I will also place one, and that is just imagine a store that blocks people because of the way they look and their and beliefs. That would be a completely different situation if you could go ahead and abuse report this person isn't allowing anybody that fits this criteria in. That would be something that you could file an abuse report report and the governance team would see whether or not there's evidence of that and if that happens to be actionable. Um, but we're not mm -hmm. talking about that. We're talking about the person who complained about something and the store owner decided I'm not going to deal with you anymore. Um, if it turns into something dealing specifically with uh, prejudice or something like that, that's a whole different conversation. That's the thing. The client who gets blocked doesn't know he was blocked. There's no notification for that. And the creator also does not know a lot of them does, does not even know that they're blocking people from the store. They think they're blocking from their personal account. The only thing There's I no could notification. in that regard would be uh, filing a JIRA for a feature request of having something send a message to somebody when they're blocking, but that could be viewed as antagonistic, so I don't know if it's something that they would go ahead and do. But it's a possibility. I imagine you people get a lot of reports from people just complaining why they are unable to buy from the store, no? Getting the same error. I really what it says. Yeah. All right. So, the Jira uh, ticket, why can I fill it out? I just put it in the chat for you. Thank you. My pleasure. Brian, I'll use that question as a segue because it, it relates directly into our Second Life University, uh, the next topic that we were going to jump in, if we're good on I was going to so say. <laughs> so, many of you know, um, we have come out with a, a, a teaching portal called the Second Life University um, that we are discussing various segments of uh, Second Life and um, you know, best practices, what you can do, how-to tips. Um, uh, the, one of the more recent uh, videos involved uh, our uh, manager of uh, operations, Kira, as well as Tommy Linden, um, talking about governance tips. That's the uh, blog I just dropped in there. Um, there was another one. Um, this one was uh, helmed by Kyle Linden, um, covering our JIRA section. And let me go ahead and drop that one in here, make sure I have the one. So you will want that one because uh, Kyle will talk about how to submit a JIRA, um, uh, things of note to put in there, uh, ways to convey your issue, and um, basically just getting around the program. Uh, for those who haven't submitted bug reports before, uh, JIRA can seem a little daunting at first. Um, there's a lot of fields to fill out, a lot of terms you might not be familiar with. Um, but after a few reports, you'll see it comes pretty easy. And don't forget my Second Life University. Oh, I was kidding me. <laughs> he also made a video. You must watch it. This one covers. Uh, oh, good. Is he? Um, you want to talk about it? Oh, sure. I was just going to say it was a lot of fun doing it and also looking at the live feed comments and stuff at the same time and not trying not to be distracted by it. Basically, my video is just about raw basics of land ownership, renting, and uh, group situations. Uh, so it really is something that I wanted to talk about uh, here in this meeting just because I know you guys sometimes deal with 
sometimes being almost all the time, uh, people that are new to Second Life. And so it's a great little thing to give them uh, if they're just starting out. It might help get rid of uh, some of the 101 basic questions that you get asked every time you deal with a new person. The advantage of a video over a, um, like a, a, a wiki page or something like that is most people either can't or won't read. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Which is why Strawberry tries to make sure that the Second Life University videos are all short. I mean, she harps on us that, you know, no longer than 30 minutes try to be closer to 15 um, because you know, people have attention deficit disorder. We... we Look at something for five minutes, and unless it grabs us, we're gone. Yeah, Governance University uh, video was absolutely packed with information. Um, but you're going to find everything. I want to touch on it more because it was just awesome. Uh, getting assistance, uh, using the support portal, abuse report, how to block someone, uh, security measures for your account, keeping it um, uh, secure for your own sake. Um, changes to the community forums, um, how to submit a DMCA. So there was a, there was a lot to unpack there, and um, it looked like they had a fun time doing it. Very well done. Any questions on what we've been discussing so far or any other topics you wanted to bring up? That's awesome, Karen. Oh, I have, I have a, something I wanted to bring up quickly. It's it's from the forums mostly, um, but there's there's been a lot of people upset about uh, zero second orbs, um, like they're they're, they're flying well, yeah. over mainland or whatever. Is there anything that can be done to to force her to be like at least I don't know five or ten seconds for somebody that's above a certain elevation to get out of there? Well, I know we've done that with Belisaria. Yeah, you know, we do do have a requirement on Belisaria with the orbs. I don't think we have it on the uh, on mainland yet, um, but that might be something to, you know, put a support ticket in on or or a Jira feature request. Just asking for a policy uh, change on that. I I just. It seems like it's just been filling up the um, the forms. I've actually stopped reading them recently because there's so much going on about that, and I got tired of the topic. But I just wondered. I mean, it does seem like if somebody's flying an airplane, and all of a sudden they're sent home in the airplanes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Depending upon where it is, um, uh, would depend on if uh, we have some guidelines set there or not. Um, so I'd say the next time you see it, it's kind of uh, mainland. Yeah, that seems to be the issue. I understand that. I know the Belisario yeah. rules very well. And the best part is those things, they send the person home, but the airplane then carries on going, smacks into someone's parcel five regions away, and then they get an AR because their airplane smacked into someone's parcel five regions away. Ugh. Oh, well. Yeah. 
Yeah, Shafi, I think one of the, the difficulties that would come up, and this is just my thought on it, is that uh, when someone owns mainland, they can do what they wish to do with it within TOS. Um, so they are well within the rights to kick people off of them, return vehicles, and so forth. So it might be an issue of trying to uh, uh, manage their rights as a landowner. Um, but it could, could still be something that's worth discussing. discussing. And again, maybe putting in a uh, feature Jira or getting that looked at. I think the problem with having that five-second delay is you also have private regions, and I often use teleport home when the place is being linden rolled so that they don't get logged out and they just get sent to a hub somewhere instead could you repeat that last part you broke up on me as someone was suggesting put a five second delay in the eject or teleport agent home functions or saying problem with that is then you've got private region owners who aren't mainland who might want to send people home like now well definitely that's what uh, uh governance was saying they were going to talk to uh the supervisor uh about whether or not a policy about orbs uh, might get implemented or not so hopefully that'll go through the right uh, paces and they'll look at it from different angles and see whether a policy change uh, needs to get made. I wanted to touch a little bit on uh, some of the things that have been going on on inventory. Um, you know, inventory um, is one of the big important parts of everyone's Second Life experience. I don't think anyone can disagree with that. So we've been doing some work on that. And I just wanted to touch on it. Um, first off, we have um, proactively reached out to a small number of residents, a few hundred, um, about their inventories. Uh, we located a few that were um particularly flat and we wanted to help change that for everyone's benefit um i guess i should back up a little bit and explain what a flat inventory is i can um, talk about what a flat inventory is sure go ahead so a flat inventory is it's not we're not talking about uh the total size of the inventory we're talking about how many items you have directly under the root folder um, and these are the items that are loaded when you log in. Um, so they do, um, there's also a list of other um, pieces that are, are loading when you log in um, that we want to kind of uh, help minimize and streamline so that um, everyone can log in and enjoy Second Life. And this is a way to improve performance, not only on the account level, but um, overall. Um, so if you have a flab inventory, um, we have done a couple of reach outs to um, uh, address that, and it's something that we've wanted to uh, work on for a little bit. Um, but there is a blog post, if I can find it, that we sent out in May that touched on um, what a flat inventory is and our uh, plan to, uh, to attack it, to uh, reduce the flatness, as you will, of reorganizing folders into smaller ones and, and, and make it so that uh, you log in and, oh, thank you. Uh, so items are not actually lost in this. Um, they're put into smaller folders, manageable folders, and you can reorganize it if you, if you like. But if you were one of the ones that uh, were contacted by us, 
or if you had uh, logged in and you saw some of your inventory has been reorganized, uh, this was part of that process. Yes, thank you, Izzy. Inventory management is good. It's always, always, always good. Um, so flight inventory, uh, top level items and folders. Uh, we are just making efforts to reduce that load um, when you log in and put them into more manageable folders. Yeah, I'd also like to, just as another inventory issue, there has been a glitch lately um, primarily affecting users who um, uh, have installed the latest Firestorm, um, as well as the last couple of Second Life viewers people have seen this as well. Uh, yes, Teresa. Um, if, if in the past you set your debug settings to not show the avatar library, you can find be an independent issue where you log in and see a completely empty inventory, uh, one that's always showing just as searching, or you may even get an error message asking you to try logging in again and contact support. Um, the, the good news on that is that even though you don't see your inventory right now, it's not missing, it's just not loading. And we will be happy to help out uh, via support ticket or even live chat uh, to get that set back up for you so you can see your inventory again. So it's just reach out to us, we can fix it for you. One point nine million? No way. Yeah, the there is technically no upward limit on inventory, but you will see issues with loading, um, particularly with a flat one. I know I personally have seen inventories over a million. How can you even log in? <laughs> How do you get past the site now? Carefully, <laughs> carefully. <laughs> and yeah, it's one of those cases where that's where the, the logic and wisdom of, of keeping your inventory from getting flat does help. Um, keeping it off that top level, uh, having a lot of folders and so forth. Uh, can really help with that because otherwise if it's trying to load a very large top level you might end up not being able to log in which is not good and to wrap this particular topic off uh, we have seen a few residents on the beta grid who are having some inventory issues especially with worn objects uh, that is you. Uh, go ahead and reach out to support uh, uh, via ticket, and uh, we have some steps we can walk you through. Um, the Typically, uh, the beta grid is for testing purposes only, um, but we do everything we possibly can to, uh, you know, restore your performance there. Absolutely, Karen. Uh, demos, um, what was it? Uh, hover text and floating text 
um, scripts, uh, delete me scripts, this kind of stuff can really pile up in inventory quickly. Yeah, I do probably a quarterly search for the word demo and just go, you know what, I haven't used this since the last time I did this search. It's gone. Uh, Jenna, unfortunately, there is no way we can, um, we can, if, uh, if I understood you correctly, you want to um, move or sync your beta grid inventory to the main grid. Um, if that uh, that's what you're leaning towards, uh, we do not have. Oh, okay, so from main grid to beta, um, that is done. Uh, we can do that um, whenever needed. Uh, you can uh, submit a ticket, and uh, we'll put you on the list to uh, have our developers uh, copy you over. They will mirror, so it'll be uh, 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 synced. Uh, what your main grid will look like. Uh, copied over to now how will your uh, beta grid will look like yeah just remember that it's a full copy over so uh, it's not an append so anything that you've got in the beta grid that you don't have in the main will be gone basically replaced by the same as your main grid. I try not to use the word destroyed, especially about inventory. People get very possessive. Yeah, hey, don't press that big red button, Izzy. But I gotta press the red button. It's a cute little red button. I was thinking of harassment intended to disrupt. But we'll see what governance says. That was my other suggestion, too. It would be between one of those two. But, yeah, like, governance is the rule there. Na, 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 na. Oh, well, well I haven't hit the limit yet, and I've been here for <laughs> a right, Here is he. Here, so... <laughs> Yeah, governance, we had two answers come out, so which one did you like better? There's a winner and there's a loser. Who is it? Oh, them's fine words, they <laughs> This is very true. That's what I actually tell everybody is, you know, you know use the best possible answer. But, you know, with uh, remember the days when there were over 50 categories. Uh, so, you know, just use whatever is the closest one. And governance is really good about going, oh, wait, this should be this and uh, making the adjustment. So I would say between those two, either disturbing the peace or harassment. Now, governance, I just basically saw, um, oh, what was the movie? Tom Selleck, Kevin Klein, uh, Bob Newhart, um, but where uh, the little postman guy goes, please use your full zip code. I remember that movie. Hey, we've got about uh, 10 minutes, give or take. Um, if you have any other questions or, or comments, uh, we'd love to hear them.
Yeah, actually, I have, uh, since we're sort of talking governance, I have a, a question that I, I would like to ask if there's some way that um, that can be helped. There's um, somebody who keeps doxing one of our Firestorm staff, um, and he keeps logging on, and he recovered real-life information from the guy, and he keeps putting it, he, he makes a million alts, and, you know, they get, banned and then he makes another one and then that gets banned and then he makes another one and that gets banned yeah the chasers ones and is there anything <laughs> anything that can be done <laughs> you know um he claims that he claims that he can't be stopped because he uses technology to hide his um his actual you know real life uh links and all that um but it's <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've had to close down some of my groups so that people can't join it for like weeks at a time because this guy gets going. Uh, we file ARs constantly, but by the time we, the AR filed, he's deleted that alt and he's created another one. Without knowing what technology he's using to try to go around it, it's hard for me to advise. But maybe bring that up at the uh, next governance user group. I, I've never been to a governance user group. <laughs> that user is probably using a VPN. It's probably blocking, it's probably masking his IP address with some. Uh, so I understand they're still looking for ways to uh, uh, bring back the uh, the group. Um, I'm assuming that you know, the older information is still uh, oh, uh, correct. They're still looking for ways to bring it back. Um, but in the meantime, we have a rep here. So it sounds like they're already aware of Chaser Zach's, um, you know, filing abuse reports and them coming back. It, it is infuriating. It can be very aggravating. Uh, so we definitely uh, feel your pain there. Um, but uh, as we always say, if any new information, any new names you come across, um, yeah, be as descriptive as you can, send in the report because they are being reviewed. Do they get reviewed? I mean, is there a way to, to to flag it so that things that are the chaser all get reviewed and killed quicker? Because if it takes like half a day, you don't know how much damage has already been done with it, him just cycling through the groups every 10 minutes, putting putting that out over and over, and, and you ban him, and then the, the group's ban fill up. So, you know, it, it I don't know. <laughs> Is there a way to expedite that particular known problem person or something? Okay, thanks.
Jenna, I'm not sure there's a plan. I, I'm not aware, but uh, just in case, I would definitely file a uh, feature request because that's a good idea. And um, sending that to the review team would be a really good step forward, at least getting into the eyes of the reviewers. Ah. Izzy is just on top of it today. <laughs> Glad to have you here as always, Izzy. Yeah, basically trying to uh, get as much done before I uh, disappear next month. Is oh, no, that becoming never a first ghost? <laughs> <laughs> no, just a lot of uh, plans next month. So I'm going to still try to pop in for this meeting next month if I can. Yeah, vacation and also a medical thing. We'll have you dial in from wherever. It's all good. Don't worry. Yeah, there you go. Well, considering I'll barely be able to walk at that point, I'll be like, second life, yay! You don't have to shy away from it, Izzy. You could tell everyone that you're getting a second brain installed. You mean first brain? Shh. Now I'm going to be the first person to actually test that uh, new neural link. I'm just kidding. You just see that going over the blogosphere. No, that is not actually what's happening. I was going to say. Now I have a little meniscus tear that they're going to go in and repair. Speedy recovery, Izzy. Take care of yourself. Thank you, thank you. Here, here. Well, we have a few minutes left. This has been an amazing meeting. Thank you, everyone, for attending and uh, being engaged. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop it on us now. Uh, yes, something related to the problem I bring up to a moment ago. Um, is there even something on the guidelines to protect users from getting unfairly blocked from a store? Not to my knowledge. I think it kind of goes by the same thing as we do with uh, uh, people that rent out land. The, it's the owner's prerogative. And, yep, governance pretty much said the same thing. So, right now, if someone gets blocked from a store they don't know they are even blocked and they also have no platform to defend themselves to to post a claim the only thing i could think of is if there was something uh prejudicial or against our terms of service about the block then you might be able to submit a uh review or a um uh, abuse report on it or something like that. Uh, also, governance is saying that they can still file a review. All right. That's the thing. It becomes complicated when the, the user does not even know. Like a lot of users, they just think it's a technical problem because the error they get is that this item is no longer available for purchase when they try to buy from the store that they got blocked from. Absolutely. Probably... That's why we mentioned doing the uh, feature requests uh, about that. I don't know if it can, uh, if anything can be done, but maybe even a feature request on a clarification of the error message would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I will do so. I also will tell my other creator friends to do so. They also are worried about this because uh, we are not only creators, we are also users. We buy from many stores. I mean, we, and this is not, it's not comfortable to see. On the one hand, a feature request could be uh, when you block someone, it checks to see if you have a store, and if you have a store, it warns the store owner this person will also be unable to buy your stuff because maybe, maybe some even, store owners like you don't said, know that. It, without even doing a check, maybe we could just change the text of confirming a block to say, if you have a store, this block's uh, access there as well. Mm -hmm. 
I just also want to relay that uh, governance uh, reply to you in chat, um, offering uh, to submit a ticket and they'll be able to confirm if they've been blocked or not with the air. So you could relay that and um, we can at least confirm um, what action was taken. The other, the other thing I have to say, Aaron, maybe it's not an option, maybe it is, but uh, if someone's thrown you out of their shop, why would you want to give them your money? Think of it that way. Um, I am talking about the cases where people are getting blocked for no reason at all, for even personal reasons or whatever. Uh, I, I do know a lot of creators no, that block don't. people just because of how they look and how they, you know, the ideas or whatever they have on the profiles. And they don't even know they're blocking them from the store. And a lot of these people that get blocked, they do want to buy from those stores because they, they are giving a specific content that they like. I, a lot of these stores are really specific. I can only speak for myself, but I know that specific or not, I certainly wouldn't want to go to a store that um, doesn't think I should buy from them. But that's me. True. Well, that is our time uh, for our meeting. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending, and uh, we will see you next month. Thank, hey, you, thank you. Have a good time. I'm glad you had fun, Katori. See you next month.